Following my recent videos on the value of going slowly and collecting information over several days or even weeks to create a beautiful and highly detailed image of a DSO or deep sky object, I've had a number of requests to explain how to go about integrating information over several days. So there are many software stacking programs out there, but I prefer the Weighted Batch Preprocessor in PixInsight. The Weighted Batch Preprocessor is one of the things that I feel is one of PixInsight's great strengths. I've made no secret that I don't really care for PixInsight as a photo editor, and I apply its strengths early on in the developing process, and then I push my images out of PixInsight into a layer-based non-destructive photo editor, in my case, Fafinity Photo, as soon as possible. Still, PixInsight does have some considerable strengths early on in the developing process and later in photo analysis. And one of the strengths early on, very early on, is the weighted batch preprocessor. When it comes to deep sky objects, it's an excellent stacker. It's the best I've ever tried, honestly. So in this episode, I'm going to show you a simple technique for stacking imagery taken over multiple days. And I'm going to use information from a project that I am presently working on, Pickering's Triangle over in the Cygnus Loop. It is a very colorful and beautiful remnant of a star that blew up perhaps 10,000 years ago. So here's the information I'm going to stack. Information collected on June 18th, and a folder named Pickering's Triangle Lights. Those are all the lights that I collected. And right beside that, you'll see another folder labeled SFS for a subframe selector. That's where I put the lights that have successfully passed calling in the subframe selector tool. And the lights from that SFS folder are the lights that we're actually going to use when it's time to stack the information. On the following night, the night was also clear, so I collected another night worth of data. And here, you can also see a folder for biases and flats, lights, and an SFS folder for those lights that have passed calling. Now, when I stack information for multiple nights, I like to create a placeholder folder to hold all of the information together because it just makes it easier to add it to the weighted batch P processor, and I'll show how and why that is in a few minutes. So I've created a folder called Pickering to Stack. In the folder, I've created two subfolders, night underscore one and night underscore two. In night underscore one, I've dragged the biases, flats, and SFS folder from June 18th. And in the night underscore two folder, I've dragged the biases, flats, and SFS folder from June 19th. It's important to put the information gathered on each separate night into its own folder. And the folders need to be labeled with a common name and then an underscore and some kind of designator, a number is good, so that the weighted batch preprocessor can know which folder is which. The weighted batch preprocessor will use these folders to know that the flats and biases gathered on June 18th go with the lights from June 18th and that the flats and biases gathered on June 19th go with the lights from June 19. I'm now going to go ahead and open up the weighted batch preprocessor in PixInsight. And because I put all the information to stack into a single super folder, Pickerings to Stack, where the information from June 18th and June 19th has been pre-sorted into folders labeled Night 1 and Night 2. Adding the information to the Weighted Batch Preprocessor is going to be very simple. I'll click on the Directory button, lower left. Go to the Pickerings to Stack folder, left click on it, and then click Select Folder. The Weighted Batch Preprocessor will begin adding all the information to itself and sorting the information into the appropriate bias, flat, and light categories, and further sorting the information into night one and night two. The Weighted Batch Preprocessor knows to sort the information by the night designation, because over toward the right, in the box called Grouping Keywords, I have entered the word night and added it. So the Weighted Batch Preprocessor will look for folders designated with that keyword and segregates all the information within that folder so that all the information pertaining to night one stays with night one and all the information pertaining to night two stays with night two. When it's finished adding the information, we can see that here where all the biases are designated night one and night two and all the flats are constrained to night one and night two and the weighted batch preprocessor also knows to segregate the flats by the color filter they were shot with. And that's due to naming conventions applied to the flats when I shot the flats using the flat wizard in Nina. So the weighted batch preprocessor will not only know to apply the flats from night one to the lights applied from night one, but it'll also know to apply the flats shot through the red filter to the lights shot through the red filter, and so on. And when we peek at the lights, you can see that all the information in the SFS folders from night one and night two went into the lights section, and they've all been further segregated by night one and night two, and also by the color filters with which they were shot. Now, since I drizzle all my images, I'm going to pop over to the post calibration tab and set up the information to be drizzled times two. 
Under the drizzle configuration box, I'll click on Enable, and there I'll set drizzling times too to the highlighted information in the list on the left. And I'll also click on the Apply to All Groups button so that drizzling is applied to all the information. Now, still on the Post Calibration tab, I'm just going to look to the upper right where it says Presets and click the Select button. It will present me with three preset options, Maximum Quality, Faster with Good Quality, and Fastest with Lower Quality. This will determine if local normalization is enabled and how many stars it will look at. Normalization is a complex topic and it's beyond the scope of just this video. In a nutshell, and please bear in mind this is going to be an inadequate definition, normalization breaks an image up into multiple tiles, looks at the brightness in each tile, adjusts that brightness and then adjusts all the tiles globally so that they roughly match up with each other. Normalization helps by, you might think of it as stretching contrast, so that, just as an example, we can perceive detail both within the brighter regions of a nebula and within the darker regions of a nebula. We'll go into this more deeply in another video, perhaps more than one video, but I'm going to select maximum quality with no compromises because I figure if I spent many hours and perhaps multiple nights collecting information, I might as well take the comparatively small amount of time to process all of that information to the best of the software's ability. Now I need to create an output folder for the weighted batch preprocessor to put information into. In the output directory subwindow lower right, I'll click the folder icon, and in the explorer window, under the Pickerings to Stack folder, I'll create a new folder and label it Prox Two Days, designating that this folder is going to hold two days worth of information. When starting a new multi-day project, I also like to purge the cache. Now the information is all sorted, and the weighted batch preprocessor is ready to go. All I have to do is hit the Run button, and stacking will begin. The weighted batch preprocessor will take care of everything else. When you hit the Run button, you'll get a little status note. Everything here is fine, so I'll just hit Continue and let it rip. Processing this much information will take about an hour and 10 minutes on my computer. When it's all done, I can open up the Prox Today's folder, and there I'll find a collection of all the output folders from the weighted batch preprocessor. It's the masters that I'm interested in. The easiest way to sort through the masters is to right click and under view, select list. And there I'll select the L, R, G and B folders labeled Drizzle 2X and open them all at the same time. Once they're open, I'll get rid of the white weighted images. We're not going to need those then reduce the size of and give each image a brief designation according to the name of its filter, in this case, the green filter, and I'll hit Ctrl A to apply a screen transfer function and the down right facing arrow on the lower left to compress the borders to around the image. I'll do that with all the images, sort them out and get them in place, and then we're ready for editing. And after about an hour of processing, during which sharpening, star removal, noise reduction happens, histograms are stretched and curves adjusted, and quite a few other editing processes are applied, we get this out of the final development. A beautiful rendition of the Pickering's Triangle. Even though it's only two days worth of information, I do need about twice as much information to really finish this image. But that's how you integrate two or more days worth of information all at once. I hope this helps, and if you have any questions or thoughts, please leave them in the comment section below. As always, thank you for watching, and have a blast doing astrophotography, and get out there and shoot that sky.